Hi everyone, welcome to Poetry with Xing, where we uncover the beauty behind poetry. So for this week, it's quite a special episode because it has been, I mean it was requested by one of our viewers, and the poem that we are looking at today is When I Dance by James Berry. So when I was reading the comments, I actually read that analysis for When I Dance, this poem, by James Berry is actually quite hard to find online and I went online to actually find the poem itself and I also had trouble finding the poem itself so it shows that this poem is quite a rarity so today we'll be delving deeper into this poem and one fun fact is that you have to bear with me a little because this now right now as I speak is the first time that I'm looking at this poem unlike previously where I prepare a script and um, plan about plan what annotations I want to make on a poem. This time because it's a requested edition so I'm doing it kind of last minute to fit in the timing of their exam according to the comments so I'll just be freestyling it now to um, try and get it out by March. But don't worry I think I'll do okay and I'll try my best. So first we'll be looking at the poem and um, I think maybe I should read it aloud so here we go when i dance it isn't merely that music absorbs my shyness my laughter settles in my eyes my swings of arms convert my frills as timing tunes my feet with floor as if i never just looked on it is that when i dance oh music expands my hearing and it wants no mathematics it wants no thinking no speaking it only wants all my feeling in with animation of place when I dance, it isn't merely that surprise dictate movements. Other rhythms move my rhythms. I uncradle rocking memory and skipping, hopping and running, all mix of movements I balance in. It is that when I dance, I'm costumed in a rainbow mood. I'm okay at any angle. Outfit of drums, crowds, madness, brown. Talking winds and plucked strings conspire. Beat after beat warms me like sun. When I dance, it isn't merely I shift body weight balances as movement amasses my show. I celebrate each dancer here. No sleep invades me now at all, and I see how I am tireless. It is that when I dance, I gather up all my senses, well into hearing and feeling, with bodies, flexible postures, telling their poetry in movement, and celebrate all the rhythms. Wow. Okay, so first up, um, I'll just uh, start annotating. So the first thing that I noticed when I was reading the poem, and you should notice as well, is the repetition. So let's just write that down first. Repetition of the phrase when I dance. So we can ask ourselves why. Perhaps it is a moment of celebration, as is suggested in the last line. Because in the last line, you see, where is it? Uh, okay. celebrate all rhythms. So definitely one theme would be about celebration. And it's a lot about being tireless. So actually when I was reading this line, I feel a bit of melancholy. So I feel like the poet is trying to say something beyond how the person is not exhausted because tireless means like you're not exhausted. But at the same time, it shows that there is something beyond physical exhaustion but also but also something like an emotional liberation how um, the speaker or perhaps the poet himself is not tired of all the sufferings that come his way and all the challenges as we'll see later in the context of this poet and his life so whenever we're looking at a poem we will um, of course bring out the themes and also link it back to the context in order to make more sense of the poem and what the poet is trying to tell us so okay the repetition of celebration could also be um, a method of emphasis the poet is perhaps trying to emphasize that it is dancing so what is so um, what is so important interesting or what's so significant about dancing personally i think it's a physical expression 
of your emotions? In what way? It's because sometimes when you are, some it kind of links to the fact that it's some feelings or some emotions or certain experiences that someone has gone through. It is very hard for you to verbalize it. So how people, so another avenue of expression is dancing. And another thing about dance is that it's very ambiguous, meaning that the person watching the performance doesn't really have a very good idea about what message the dancer is trying to convey. And that brings ambiguity into the entire picture in the sense that the, there is room for interpretation of the dance by the audience. And at the same time, the dancer is free to express whatever he wants. So there's, so in a sense, there is not as much censorship, I would say, for a dance as compared to for a, um, for a sharing. So here, afterwards, we look at when I dance, it isn't merely, so it isn't only about, so it isn't only about music. So there's this idea of something that's artistic, something that is intangible, something that has to do with your culture, which is also linked to the context of the poet. So firstly, music that absorbs my shyness. So there's a certain kind of personality that is um, that is no longer it's just kind of like the shyness is a personality that the music hides so it's some sort of a safe haven once again an avenue for expression my laughter settles in my eyes how we say eyes are the windows of one's soul and how that links to laughter so it shows that the person is truly happy so the true happiness express through dance and why not speech so that's a question that you can think about my swings of arms convert my frills as timing tunes my feet with floor so I would say here we can see alliteration which mirrors the rhythm of dance how there's some kind of pattern that one has to follow and perhaps if we link it back to the human experience this pattern could be seen in the inevitably in inevitable cycle of life and how humans usually we have to go through a lot of um, basically we have to go through different milestones in our life and the dance is somewhat like um, the various milestones that we're going through which is rhythmic because everybody has to go through it it's very universal over here I feel this is quite striking as if I never just looked on so as if so it means as the timing tunes my feet with floor, as if I never just looked on. As if means that in reality, did the person look on? So over here, I think we can link it back to the idea of um, imagination versus reality. How much of this poem of dancing is imagination and how much of it is reality? This is perhaps another theme that you would like to look at. Especially the imagination in music settling in eyes, uh, laughter settling in my eyes, music absorbing my shyness. A lot of these things are very intangible. It cannot be seen. Or rather, it cannot be felt, like it cannot be touched. You can't really quantify it. So if you can't really quantify it, do you consider that a, a figment of your imagination? Okay, so as if I near, never just looked on. So look on here suggests passivity. The person's very passive. So beyond dancing now, what else could the poet... Sorry, I'm just trying to find a space to write stuff. Okay, so beyond, pa beyond looking on in a dance, what else could the poet be suggesting? So dance, human experience, how about 
context of society and the culture that James Barry was part of. I think one thing that will really really help in your analysis of this poem is to look at the context of the time that it was written. So when was it written? And you can connect these ideas to the poem and it might help you see a better picture of what's happening. Is that when I... So, okay, so about the passivity, I think it also um, touches on the idea of race. Because as we will look at James Barry, James, James Barry's profile and personal background later on, you realize that it's kind of um, a bit of racial tension that exists in a lot of his poetry. It is that when I dance, oh music expands my hearing. Here there's an exclamation. Oh music. So perhaps the person is really um, enjoying it. And also it's kind of an expression of his feelings. So it shows that the person feels very secure and safe. Why? Because you can hear that it's kind of written in a spoken tongue. Oh, music expands my hearing. So if the person is really willing to speak so informally, it should be quite a secure and safe space. It wants no mathematics, no thinking, no speaking. It only wants all my feeling. So here we can we can see in the tangible versus the intangible. Intangible being feeling. Tangible is a juxtaposition, which is mathematics. So here there's a large contrast that you can see. In linking it back to the idea of tangible, I will also say that it's perhaps more of material. So more about the material world versus your inner world of your values, mm, what you stand for. And so this is one idea, like the tangible and the intangible. This is an idea that I feel can be considered a binary opposition within the poem. Because um, it's a tension, it's kind of a tension within the poem be between the tangible, which is like the material, objects, math, etc. And your intangible, the feeling, the embracing of life, the embracing and celebrating. So, in with animation of place. I'm just wondering what this means. Animation, it suggests that it's something perhaps technology related, but I don't think so in the context of when it was written. Animation maybe is a figment of your imagination or it's very animated. So being it making um if something is very animated it just means that it's very vivid. The entire image in front of the speaker, the entire experience that the speaker is going through is very vivid. And this place, because it's a place, where is it? It's also very vivid. So it perhaps shows the extent of enjoyment. And perhaps also conveys the idea of how much it's real versus unreal. Is it merely in the speaker's imagination? If so, what is the poet trying to say about imagination and perhaps idealization of certain things? Idealization of celebration, idealization of the current life that the speaker is going through. 
when I dance, it isn't merely, again, the repetition. So there's some kind of, it's kind of like a song-like manner, if you realise. That surprise dictate movement. So, surprise, there's an element of surprise. So, beyond the calm emotions, calm elated emotions, there's also an element of surprise. So, one question that you can ask is, is it a good surprise or a bad surprise? A bad surprise would be like something that you don't want to know but you heard the news about it. A good surprise could be knowing that you got good grades on a test or something. So, another um, striking thing that I noticed here is dictate. So dictate here, I think, is like controlling and it's a high, kind of like quite a strong word for controlling. So it could link back to the idea of society and how has society been controlling these group, this group of people or the speaker for so much, so long. So it's perhaps society's expectations and norms or even uh, prejudices that make the speaker stuck in where the speaker currently is such that the speaker requires dance to liberate himself. Other rhythms move my rhythm. Other rhythms move my rhythm. Mm, I think one question that you can ask is what are these other rhythms? So it's quite ambiguous here. Other rhythms move my rhythms. So what are these? My rhythms, what could it um, refer to? I would think heart, because you think your heart is beating. So are other people, I'm not sure if it's really a stretch here, but I would ask, are other people the strength um, the speaker needs to continue living and li linking it back to the greater bigger picture does it show the need for human interaction and human connection I uncradle rocking memory wow this is an image that is needs some unpacking. I uncradle. So uncradle is a baby because you only cradle babies. So you treat the memory with care because it's a baby. Like it's um it's compared to with a baby treat treat with care. Rocking memory. So rocking it could be because it's a baby. But could it also suggest another connotation which is that it's quite jarring something that disturbed his the the person's life disturbed the person's life because rocking is like rock like rocked your life which means which means that this incident really changed your life a lot and memory is something in the past so i think the entire imagery about uncradling the rocking memory it is showing that dance liberates and it also forgives makes uh makes the person know how to let go because they because the person is um, letting go of his memories and perhaps these memories are traumatizing they are jarring they are disturbing skipping hopping and running all mix of movements i balance in so all these are very carefree movements let me use another color i hope you are able to see my annotations by the way these are very carefree. Why? Because the dance has liberated the person from all the past um, grievances. Gr 
grudges. It is that when I dance, I'm cons I'm costumed in a rainbow mood. So it's a mishmash of moods, and it's mostly rainbow. Usually, is used to signify happiness. So, when the person is dancing, the person is in an utter entire state of happiness. I'm okay at any angle, so no insecurities. Outfit of drums, crowds, madness, round. So here, this statement is quite convoluted. So perhaps you could say, could make a statement about the convolution. It perhaps signals the happiness, maybe drunk, drunk, um, demeanor of the person. The person is drunk on happiness because of this convoluted sentence which doesn't really um, make absolute sense. It's also a, a very deliberate choice on the, po on the poet's part. Talking winds and plucked strings conspire beat after beat warms me like sun. So talking winds personification. The winds are speaking. Why? And you realize winds are things that blow um, any direction. And it also links the idea of seasons, seasonal change. And also the idea of how humans' lives are like seasons. Blowing in any direction, freedom, unpredictability, in winds, and they're talking, so they're discussing something. So to synthesize this, it might be that life is unpredictable, like and but yet, life is unpredictable, yet despite all the suffering that the speaker has gone through because of society's tensions, society's expectations, or even um, certain pressure distance against the speaker, the speaker still has to go through the inevitable se um, seasonal changes, which is a part of life. And, this, and these seasonal changes are actually milestones in the person's life. Plucked strings conspire. Conspire is not a very good word. So it might be somebody is trying to go against the speaker. And it also raises the question of um, whether or not there's true happiness. Because even amid the ha even amid the elation of dancing, there is still certain kind of um, conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiration going behind talking, gossiping. So even amid the the en the entire happiness, is there such a thing as true total happiness? Because there will still be some nagging feelings, or nagging uh, unhappiness happening behind the dance. It might not be by the speaker because the speaker isn't perpetrating these uh, gossips, these, these conspirations, but it, it is rather other factors that are beyond his control, like wind, which is a part of the seasons. It is inevitable. You cannot control wind, and it will always be here. And pluck strings. Other people will pluck these musical instruments. So it's other people um, spreading these kind of bad stuff. Um, while the speaker is having the time of his life. So is there actually total happiness, entire happiness, such that the speaker is able to enjoy without being reminded of um, all these bad things, like these nagging feelings of con, these nagging um, gossips and stuff. Beat after beat warms me like sun. So here you realise that um, after I say, after I've shared my interpretation of the line above, Warming me like sun would be somewhat a subversion. Despite all these 
conspirations talking these kind of gossiping stuff um all these st- all these words do not really affect the speaker because the speaker is warmed like sun so there's this feeling of joy so does it truly mean that the speaker is un- totally unaffected by what they say or is it just a pretense I'm not sure if you can see it. Okay. When I dance, it isn't merely I shift body weight balances as movement amasses my show. I celebrate each dancer here. So I'll erase this part a little. Okay, so... Give me a moment, I'll erase this. If you haven't like taken down much, you can um, rewind the video a little because it really is kind of messy. Okay. I celebrate each dancer here. Embracing differences. Body weight balances again, alliteration refer to the previous point where I was talking about rhythm in the poem, which also mirrors dance because in, in dance you also have rhythm. As movement amasses my show, I celebrate each dancer here. So it isn't merely about what you see, so physical, but what you see as the dance, but also what is behind the dance, which is embracing differences. And also being at one with one's emotions. No sleep invades me now at all. And I see how I'm tireless. So there's this kind of um, infinite nature of the spirit. And how although the body may be tired, the spirit and the the ideas that are driving this person is tireless. It is that when I dance, I gather up more all my senses, well into hearing and feeling, with bodies flexible post- postures, telling their poetry and movement and celebrate all the rhythms. Here again, talking about the physical and what is behind it. And the last two lines about their poetry in movement and celebrating all the rhythms. How is dance like poetry? I won't answer this for you. You can think about it. How is dance like poetry? And how is dance a poetic form? And how do you define poetic form? Celebrating all their rhythm, celebrating all poetry. So now we're done with the poem. I will zoom out a little to get to let you see what we've uh, covered so far. And now I want to talk a little bit about the context of this James Berry, the poet. So. Apparently, When I Dance is a 59-poem um, collection, but this but it's titled um, When I Dance. Oops. Uh, so this guy, he is... He likes to mix the cultures together, as can be seen by the highlighted bits. And when I dance, it's all about these ideas. And you can think about how these ideas link back to the poem itself, which we examined just now. So all these are like the little trivial ideas of life. But how does he link it back to other greater themes or messages? 
and I also went to um you can also take a look at the highlighter parts here so one key thing to note the emotional duality in his work and he his love for his Jamaican background and forms of work but yet this love is contaminated by bitter oppressions of slavery so this is about society so how does this link back to the poem just now ultimately it's one of celebration does this sound familiar in when I dance without denying the hurt of colonial experience he chooses to defy prejudice through an emphasis of unity and how the person, the speaker embraces dancing, embraces anyone who dances inside a poem. So this is something that you can think about. So I would like to say credits to all the, um, the sources that I took screenshots of, poetryarchive.org and ukagp.org.uk. Um, that's all for today's very impromptu episode of poetry wishing if you would like another poem to be analyzed please comment the poem and poets poem and poet in the comments below